Stand by to receive our transmission. Stand by to receive our transmission. It's the unauthorized, unofficial, and unasked for <laughs> after the book of Boba Fett stand by, stand by. podcast slash video cast. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm Sas Lindenstein. This is my good friend, uh, PNANW, <laughs> Brian Trendler. Well, it says right there, you know, you can see in the video. Oh, that's um, I need to change that. So that's that's fine. What I wanted to do, I've always, uh, my big dream is basically to have someone else's job. Um, <laughs> who is, you know, whereas to like, just talk about all these shows that I love, but like, like as a, as a living, just watch the shows and talk about them after with people and, you know, maybe eventually get guests from those shows to show up and chat with us about the experience. And so I've been wanting to do one. I love Star Wars, as a couple people may be aware of. Uh, Brian, Brian loves Star Wars. Uh, so I thought, hey, what Star a good Wars chance. Longer. Huh? I've loved Star Wars longer than you. Pro- yeah, like a decade longer. Probably. I don't know about that. Smarty pants. Hey, uh, I've been alive since it's been around, so I don't think you could have. Your age can't make it. You love it more than me, so longer you were than Cuba me. When it first I was three. You were three. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was seven. Yeah. yeah. So, no, nah, no, nah, man. Same age. Same. It doesn't matter. We've both been around. So, lifelong fans. Absolutely. And so I thought that's the kind of person I want to talk to, talk about, and also yeah. someone you know, available during the day. Um, <laughs> Brian, uh, is this a show that you looked forward to? Bo- yeah. The Boba Fett show? Because I know some people who had no interest in Boba Fett, yeah. really, because they thought he was actually overrated. Those aren't real people. Those yeah. are, that, that's like fake news. Those are, those are Nazis. Those, those people are not human. You know, they did have a good argument that Boba Fett kind of gets, you know, just beat up real quick, like in Return of the Jedi. Like he just, you know, he just we yeah. see like five minutes and he like knocked out of the fight. So let me let me interject right off the bat about that. I yeah. think I think it's brilliant that Boba Fett was originally cast as I mean, actually, let's take a step further back. His armor was designed to be a series of like super troopers back when they were cutting stuff out of foam and plastic and modeling it. And that's where the all white Ralph McQuarrie model came about. And it was supposed to, like I said, be a ton of super troopers introduced in Empire Strikes Back, but they didn't have the budget for it. Mm -hmm. So they decided we're going to keep him. And Lucas said, let's make him a bounty hunter. So then they went through the painting versions and so on and so forth to create that. So from the get-go, he's always been kind of an afterthought. And the fact that he became polarized as the badass, the yeah. ultimate bounty hunter, right? Can do everything. And the, all the original canon or not comic books had him as a total tough guy. And, you know, basically the Clint Eastwood of the Star Wars equivalent of the old Wild West. And then he kind of faded for a while. And then then the movie happened in Return of the Jedi where suddenly we all got to see it. And then boom, again, they didn't have the budget to do anything with him. And then they offed him. And it's just really funny because then there's, what what is that, 35, 40 years of what the hell happened to Boba Fett. Yeah. And the mystique behind it. And then the following... Cart comic books that you know sort of dialogued and, and created them the mystique but I, I mean anybody who who doesn't like him i honestly think they're missing something about just the joy of the fandom of star wars right so i i think that's a nice story you told <laughs> I, I i like i would love to and i'll never that. be on the show again <laughs> however the holiday special kind of messes with that lore, well and so right? does the original animated cartoon where he's the weird colors oh is he yeah weird animated? weird colors and riding that funky brontosaurus looking thing you can I just see don't... on the disney channel the original animated shorts and they're horrific now i, I do th- it's amazing to me that a star wars movie would have a budget problem but i do get i mean i understand like that's why they went 19, with ewoks it was 1980 1981 right i mean budgets didn't exist at that point everyone was flying by the seat of their pants it just 
you know these movies were so expensive it just it's funny to hear like budgets like being a problem for like why they couldn't have why they couldn't have a it'll be a wookie planet instead of they cut the budget in half by having it all little people it's it's, it's not a wookie planet it's canada it's, it's, it's the canadian's forest uh yeah, yeah and I, I don't know i don't a lot of these lores i i don't I feel like Lucas has lied too many times for me to trust. Like, oh yeah, you're in the Super Trooper, sure. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, you knew that they were brother and sister. Oh yeah, sure you did. Yeah. Okay. Um, here here's a funny thing. Somebody was pointing out. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not. They said that he got such a hard time for not having any any people of color in the first one. So that they got, they got, he like got a lot of pressure and yelled at yeah. to to put somebody black in Empire Strikes Back. That's how Lando, Lando Billy D got his token role. But the person who said that also said uh, because people didn't like seeing that there was a future where it was all white. And I'm like, well, yeah, doesn't take place in the future though. So that's yeah, that's your problem. I don't trust this story now either. Yeah. Um, I just don't. And then, then Lucas went so far to prove that he adopted black children. <laughs> like that, he must have felt so bad. It's like, well, I better adopt black children too. Just well, I think at that point he was competing in all fairness with Angelina Jolie. So really, he was just <laughs> he was, was just he was just grabbing the hand me downs. He just figured, ah, just just give me uh, three of those, you know. He, okay, he so you were awesome. excited to see this. Um, I was excited to see yeah. that they were going to use the actor from. Right, it's the same actor from Clone Wars, or yeah. so Attack it, of the is, Clones, right? it is Tamira, or yeah, Tamira Morrison. Yeah, and obviously he's aged. I think he's aged well. I like the bald look. Mm -hmm. So they're they're doing their tie-ins. I I do think it would have been a gross, you know, fallacy had they recast him in yeah. this. I'm glad that they didn't. Although, quite frankly, they could have used the kid who was the young Boba Fett character, who I actually liked. He was kind of bratty. But kind of like you know, I'm you know, I don't have a growth hormone. I'm you know, I can do that well. And yeah. and he he was an interesting version of a young Boba Fett that wasn't going to age quickly, or a right. young, I should say, a young clone. Yeah, cloned by Django, right? Boy, it's confusing as hell. Anyway, um, they could have used him. I think they should have, quite frankly. I but it may not have worked as far as the age of him now to play the Sarlacc falling in Boba version. But either way. Well, it just fits with the lore so much, I think, for it to yeah. be the exact yeah. same face. So yeah. I'm glad I, 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 I think he did well. Um, his voice, because of Rebels, you know, and because of everything that he's had his voice behind now, including mm -hmm. the horrible Attack of the Clones and everything else, um, it, it, it's nice that they've kept that, synch that synchronicity. And, yeah, I mean, we can get into the show details itself. But, yeah, I mean, I did, I've been waiting since Return of the Jedi. So, you know, 35 some odd years to see a show about Boba Fett. So this was yeah. a wet dream. Absolutely come true. I'm still Better trying bad. to explain to my daughter, my six-year-old, that Boba Fett and the Mandalorian are not the same person. Like, she still hasn't figured that. Really? Out. Um, so hopefully she'll, she'll get there. I, I, was, I was glad to see him on Mandalorian. Yeah. I was, I was actually a little surprised that they were going to do his own series. But, and so the premise of it seems to be that he's going to be trying to take over Jabba's old territory. Yes, he um, has very poorly, but he has. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, so it opens up film. Uh, the show opens up with him having some flashbacks to what well, I was looking yeah. forward to. Well, I didn't actually even the tribute. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Let's not go flashbacks yet. I'm sorry. I know this doesn't is it open with the flashbacks opens up with the tributes. They're sitting there. Oh, the, it does. The, and the okay. Aqualush is like, blah, 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 you know, and he's, he's giving his his thing. So tribute. So the people are coming in basically to show their payment to, for him being in charge. Exactly. Yeah. And the Twilic D-bag who doesn't want, you know, who's just, you know, it, dude, I actually drank during the episode. Okay. I took a shot every time a Twilic said apologies. apologies. So I was like ripped you know 15 minutes into the Boy, minute yeah. episode okay i'm so, amazed that you you expected that oh really <laughs> i i just i kind of heard from someone that that might happen so yeah I, and anyway that would that that was a great scene but it was it was kind of painful um 
So this man, I swore that it had opened up with the. I thought I should watch it more than once. I could be wrong too. I thought it opened up with the him flashing back, but I like that. He so paying tribute, so he's clearly at Jabba's palace, yeah. and we're gonna see. And you're it's, absolutely right. I'm sorry. I just played it back in my mind. I apologize. So edit okay. this out. It did start with a couple of the flashbacks. You are right. Because okay. then, then Fennec wakes him up from that cool new Bacta tank, mm-hmm. the horizontal version. Oh, yeah, the horizontal Bacta tank. I like that. And said people are, you know, people are coming. Get up, get up out of bed, sleepyhead. Yeah. You know, and then woke him up. And then he puts on his outfit like a badass. I want to, can I just say, I want droids to dress me. Now, an accident could go horribly wrong, and yeah. I might lose Ooh. a few inches. I don't something. want them to zip me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, only with drawstrings. I got that. Um, but I thought that was kind of a kind of a cool scene because he, he's like, yeah, you're my droids now. And, and <laughs> so one of that took a lot of programming. I really liked finding out, because that was the thing I didn't like about him in Mandalorian, was I was like, well, how did he escape? Or do we, are we not going to ever find out? I like that they they did answer the question. Like it could have always been a mystery, yeah. but I like the answer. They show why he or how he got out of the tank. What happened? But but, but were you disappointed? I mean, seriously, it's like throw some th- throw some kids goop, you know, a toy, you know, th- like the slime, like the slimer yeah. that Nickelodeon drops yeah. on people's heads. Drop a whole tanks like ten tanks worth of that stuff into a scene with some fake intestine looking stuff. I get it. He sees the stormtrooper who's obviously dead and already being yeah. digested, steals his oxygen. And then it looks like he might've also used the oxygen, the pure oxygen to, to light the flame as he punched oh, it through, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think. Okay. But I think honestly, that was the lamest escape scene I've ever seen. I loved that they did it. It was a total mm-hmm. fan tribute to answer the question after 35 years of what the hell happened yeah but then was it weird to you that he popped out of the sand near the star yeah i was like oh, how much wow. sand did he have to go up or i was like how big is this guy well, yeah like i've never seen a cool um was it doug um uh the um, the amazing artist doug somebody who 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 does all the amazing storyboards um I've I, I've never seen like what's underneath the sarlacc, like how right. far to the left or right does he go? That's the only way it was making sense to me, and it was stupid that he like popped out of the side. I I wanted him to grab those cool teeth as he was walking out or something, and then oh. it collapsed. You know what I mean? Yeah, that could have been, anyway. yeah, that could have, that could have, anyway. that could have been a thing. I, I like that they uh, answered it though. But I like that he, yeah, he, and he burned him from the inside. I like that. I guess yeah. he could have hiccup, also hiccuped. Yes. But you know what? Bad we intestine. Just see a blowhole hiccup. Just a, <clears throat> just spit him out because he torched the end. Talk about gas, right? Heartburn. Come on. Strange but, slime and bad intestines are kind of a tradition in Star Wars. Yeah. So I'm okay with I'm okay with that. Let's keep it going. Always okay. have weird Let's intestines. Let's focus on. Genesis. I like the zip. I like the actually pulling out the stormtroopers' oxygen, and I was like, "Oh, okay, all right." I didn't That's know they had doing. oxygen. I was like, "Where? I don't know where they keep that." We're always adding little things to stormtroopers, and I'm like, "I have no idea how they." I think that comes out of the little Lego piece on their on their backside. <laughs> yeah, it looks just like a Lego piece. I think oh, that's yeah. oxygen, Hank. Uh, they did that so that they can, in the future they would make Star Wars Lego video games. <laughs> they knew. Fuck them up. They said one tr- day it's going to be a thing. They're all going to be electric troopers. They're yeah. going to be running off of Tesla batteries. <clears throat> and so the, this first episode is all about his, uh, basically his escape from there and what happened yeah. to him immediately after, immediately after, which yep. was some torture by some, are we supposed to say Tuscan Raiders? I don't know what's politically correct. I mean, I, people, I feel like San people sounds people. very, you know, politically correct and, and very well-minded. But because Tuscan Raiders sounds a little judgy, but they are Tuscan. Oh, they are thought, Tuscan Raiders. That's I thought people. the Sand People sounds like a slur. It does sound a little racist. I thought that's what like the locals call them, like yeah. like Sand People, dusty buggers. Ugh, sounds and, too gay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I'm like I'm like oh I think I need to say Tuscan. Yeah. Raiders. Or if somebody has a stutter, they don't want to say Tuscan Raiders. They oh the the Sand People. They just, were you they, thrown they, off when the Tuscan Raiders walked toward them? like side by side i I was, I was like no they go in single file what are you doing no only no okay only then, when they're then, on the yeah for the record 
Obi-Wan told that to Luke, okay, you have to pay attention now. Yeah. They only travel in single file when they're on Bantha, so you can't figure yeah. out. Well, but first I, there, yeah. they pass, they can walk in, sp- in spread form. To hide the numbers. I, yeah, I, was, I, I was like, oh, it's only on the Banthas that they do that. Okay. I just want to say right now, the next show needs to be an entire fan people series because they're fascinating. They're like Yoda. You don't even really know what species they are. They've never been unmasked. They adopt and or take other people from that they find. And potentially, I think I want to see more flashbacks and see if he kind of becomes a Tuscan Raider for a while as he gets back up on his feet, whatever, because I love them. And I love the fact that in The Mandalorian, they hired a, um, a deaf person to create a hand signal language specifically for The Mandalorian Tuscan Raiders. Mm. So they're doing amazing things that people are already bitching about online right now. They need to just shut up because it's just just the first episode. You know what I mean? You can yeah. put so much into it. Um, so well, yeah, really SF Gate has a headline that says Book of Boba premiere is an abysmal failure on every level. And I'm like, I don't know what show they watch. Well, um, they're also broadcasting from their grandmother's basement. So do you think that one of the Raiders is his partner? Oh, that, is uh, is uh, 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 Fennec Shand? Yeah. No. Okay. No, no. She's she's an actual. She's again part of comics and everything else. She's she's been around for a while, so they just like hook up. However, that okay. hooked up. I was wondering, like, because there seemed to like he seemed to be having a connection with like a couple of like, you know, the king and queen or whatever. Of I, the, of I the think group. as soon as we see him get off world. And then, you know, realize that Jawas took his armor and we may or may not see that type of thing come in. We may see Mando crossover onto the Fed series. So oh, yeah. will eventually collide in, in that sense. I mean, Fennec was hired originally to do something and then that's how they ended up, ended up connecting. So we'll see. Okay. I don't know. Um, I will watch Ming-Na Wen in anything, <laughs> period. Because she never ages and she's amazing. Okay. Clear. And Jennifer Beals is in it. Jennifer, flash dance, my girl, flash dance. What a feeling. The headline uh, that, that caught me with her is that she didn't even know she was in it yeah, uh, she, when she was making not, it. She's not too bright, but that's okay. <laughs> she's married to Clark Gregg, who's cool. They have, a, they have a beautiful family, cute dog. I mean, come on. Her character's name is Madam Flip, for crying out loud. So she's, she's one of the she's a twi'lek she's she was the main twi'lek the, who was like welcome and you're welcome anytime and then she does the clap and then he gets the, yeah the helmet of gold so she's basically like the harem chick you think she's gonna be a, a regular do you think that's a regular i i think she will be the main person in the moss eisley scene i think it's not we'll, most eisley what it's not most eisley that was it's most assessment Oh, was it? Okay. Well, some somewhere I saw it was called a Moss Eisley Cantina scene, so whatever. Most Bespin. Um, most yeah, Bespin. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 because that caught, that threw me when they said that. I was like, yeah. we're going to Most Bespin. I was Bespin. Okay. So I was like, it was like an updated classy. Well, we'll yeah. see her more. And I think that where she, we're, I think we're going to see that she's more powerful than some dippy club owner, right? I also think the original Star Tours 88, uh, not 88, um, what was it? Um, oh, for crying out loud. The, the, uh, the card dealer droid. I mean, dude, that's like, that's RX-24 from Star Tours. He was the dealer. Total, oh. total egg. For those of us who were on the first Star Tours ride, thank you. In yeah. 1986. Um, yeah, so... I think he's going to be the actual crime lord. Just, just so you know. Oh, okay. Good thing. <laughs> Let's put some Vegas bets on this. He's the actual crime lord. I'll, I'll put five credits on black. So it's interesting. So Boba goes into the town to sort of like throw his weight around, show who he is. He gets some Gamorreans there. This is a which I like. I like these Gamorreans. They're just like some chubby dudes with a halloween masks on do you think they're fat suits or do you think that they really did just get two chubs I think and brush them up and then yeah. put the mask on yeah no that's what they did okay that's what i'm betting okay. i want to know who they I, are i i agree with you and i think it's funny because the ones we saw in return of the jedi 
wearing bloated wireframe costumes yeah. with armor. And these guys are just like, it's like I don't like, need that. They're like the club med of 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 Gamorian guards, you know. They're saving money. They're like, we can't do prosthetics on everybody, so we're just gonna get some chubby guys that look like <laughs> you look like a Gamorian. Do you want to be in the show? Yeah. Like, how do they? How did they market for that? Looking for two fat pigs. Oh, and you're gonna be a Gamorian. You know, yeah. A pig so, race. Well, I audition sometimes, and it's just my hands. They want pictures of my hands, so they huh. might have just been like, "Hey, send in. Are you this shape?" Are you shaped like a melting pear? Maybe <laughs> send in, send a in summer a, squash. Send in the body shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. All right. Oh, uh, so he goes and throw, and people are thrown off because he doesn't have. He's um, not being not, carried in by people. Yeah, they want to show a lavish show, and he's yeah. like, "I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be respected by people." So he yeah. gets attacked, right? Yeah. And can we cool talk fight about scene. that attack scene? Huh. Are we going to talk about that attack scene? Yeah. Dear Did God, you not, man. You not like it? Horrible. Horrible? I do hope that, again, I'm giving it credit because I loved it. Yeah. But the fight scene was so staged and so, and one, and two, and, 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 and like the top scene of, of, of Fennec and Boba reacting toward the obviously later CGI picks and everything yeah was so bad it frustrated me because then the very slow summer sausage shaped gaborians whatever finally show up and start hacking and slashing yeah and then can we talk about parkour parkour the most like, horrible sure. plan chase scene ever <laughs> i mean silas you i am just a watch life. things and let it go and just like I'm i wanted just... to i was singing let it go in in my head but as a lifelong Star Wars fan, I almost turned it off during the Fennec um, uh, uh, rooftop chase scene. The amazing choreographed pirouette. Here, I'll, here I'll, I'll grab this. The pirouette swoop around the top of the building to land on the other side. Did and you not the, catch the reference to that? I, I, I didn't. It's a video I, game. There's a video it, game. Okay. It was a video oh. game. They were doing video. They were literally doing the video game jumps that are yeah. in this. It's a little one from your app, from your phone that you play. God, and I was like, well, I want to know. I know there has to be, there has to be a connection between that video game and this because it was an obvious recreation of it. So I've seen so many B-rated science fiction movies over the last five years or so. I've seen that done so many times. There's always like a parkour jump scene or fight scene. I mean, at one point you can see him bounce on the trampoline to cross over in the, one of the scenes right before they get their butts kicked. So that frustrated me. And I didn't know if that was serving the fans or like you said, referencing a video game or whatever. And some of that, I hope that they stop because it was overt, overdone, and just stupid. But honestly, that was the only complaint I had about episode one, that chase and fight scene. It was horribly I, done. I, I had, I mean, I don't know. I just had yeah. fun with it. I was having fun with it. I, was, I didn't even. But at the same time, I was having fun too, right? But the sarcastic person in, in me is like, and then plus my two kids are, are literally yelling parkour parkour because they're because they're just giggling at it right and uh, so it's like i'm like this is serious this is a chase scene don't laugh at this you stupid kids and then i realized oh my god it's so choreographed so again it was really my only complaint other than he escaped from the starlight pit too easily and yeah they, and they pooped him out of a weird hole um yeah like so. I have, the game's loading right now i'm like i want to show you this it's is this it's pretty like a hardcore game? It's called Victor. Um, or sorry, it's called Vector Two. Okay. Um, okay, I don't want. It's full of ads, which is oh, well. Hey, while while you're doing that, which is great television, um, can we talk about the Tuscan Raiders again for for a second? Okay. So what am I seeing? Oh See? wow! Look at that. They really are just jumping and doing parkour oh yeah there's the roll oh yep jump over yeah mm -hmm. i mean I, yeah. this was completely the game that's what i saw happening and i was like oh is there's then i was excited because i was like wait was this game that i've been playing have a connection to star wars that i didn't know about have i been yeah. playing a star wars ripoff game or something well it'd be like I discovering i've been playing sabic or whatever <laughs> 
I just forgot his name. Uh, Dave Dave Filoni is a massive gamer. So I don't remember how okay. much influence he had on this episode. I know this was okay. this was John Favreau one. Maybe yeah. that's, maybe you're absolutely right. But I well, just think that that stuff is overdone and it's hokey. And it's, I hadn't seen it before, but I'm sure it's overdone. But shooting him with a missile as he's climbing up. Hell yeah, more uh, of that. I like that. Yeah, that was, was great. great. And then he looks at her and goes, "I need him alive." And it's like, "Okay, there's only two left." You know, I thought that was <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, R two D two just like peeked out of the side of your screen. That's Did that's it? that's great. Oh, yeah, I do have. Um, it's not meant to be an Easter egg, but do you think was... we're gonna see more about the Tuscan leader guy? Oh yeah, no, like, we can't my, be done. My here. favorite scene is when he just hands the little creature with the water in it to Boba. Like little coconut coconut creatures yeah just like i love that scene because you know he could have blown it he could have told everybody no you idiots the kid didn't do anything i did he didn't the the kid's bragging that he choked the beast and he let the kid have the moment and that leader guy just comes over and just hand, it's like signifies his freedom and i totally thought it was like a nod to yeah i know you did it dude thanks for shushing up and letting the okay i was wondering because i i was I was wondering when he when he brought the head there. Yeah. I was like, man, it looks like he's giving he looks like he's claiming credit, but is yeah. he actually oh, yeah. telling them what happened? Because nobody's when he attacking was the story. He was imitating all of the moves. And oh, and I was wondering if is he saying what Boba did? Because nobody's no. like everyone's like leaving Boba oh. alone. Like nobody's yeah. bothering. And so was he taking that? But then when he handed them, I was like, okay, this dude knows that boba did it boba so, saved him have you followed the comics over the years anytime that they've had sand people as oh, sorry Tuscan readers as part of it i've never you know what <laughs> this sounds weird no it doesn't probably this will sound weird okay. i never watched read really star wars comic books because yeah. i didn't think they were real okay so like, you just didn't have access to them or? no i didn't think they would count Oh, I kind so of thought of them as fan. Like, I thought they were just like fan fiction made up. Stuff. Really? See that so, that would have never dawned to me because I, I just I just ate up hungrily everything Star Wars that could be fed to me. You know what I mean? Well, I did when I first started reading books. You know, books. Yeah, sure, sure. Like the Adventures of Han Solo, and then uh, Splinter the Mind's Eye. Yeah. But then once I got turned on to the, what I didn't like was that it was always disconnected from each other, right? Sure. And then once I was told, hey, they started doing these tri these books, but they're going to tie them all together. So what happens in one re should, yeah, should affects be all the others. And I fell in love with that idea. Yeah, yeah. And so when I didn't think that something, like I never really thought, I never thought video games would affect what was going on. So I did play the video games, but I'm playing the game, so I don't really didn't really care on that but yeah. it did yeah, yeah. even that still bothered me a little bit knowing like well this doesn't count like this is this is just a made-up thing <laughs> this is made up yeah, yeah. the other yeah, stuff no. is real okay See, that uh, that shows even though we're not that much i'm not that much older than you uh -huh. that shows a distance between our levels of fandom because i didn't care and i never would have thought about that to me the books were books they were great comic books were comic books fantastic and the whole point of my initial question and in and, and, and games too, although I kind of separated that out because that was just fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I never had the games. I had to go like run over to a friend's house and play because my parents said, well, let me have them. But anyway, I think that that Tuscan Raider leader guy yeah. is actually going to become Darth Crate and not Crate and Barrel. That's K-R-A-Y-T. This is a, a I Sith Lord? He is a Sith Lord. He's actually... Um, well, so his name is the Shard Het. If it's really him, he was in the original comic books and he's a force sensitive human raised by Tuscans. Okay. Cause the, cause the Tuscans have all types of apparently species that mm -hmm. they may or may not really be one and later, and this is like a hundred years after the fall of the emperor, he becomes one of the Darth Lord, dark Lord of the Siths. So I'm curious because his outfit looks a lot like it. So I'm curious. In a hundred years? Yeah. Because remember, they extend their life. They extend their life. They extend their life. So I, I could be wrong. In the but, I, but the second I saw 
his face and his outfit, he looks just like Darth when, Crate. When did the comic books, when were these comic books out? Was it 90s? when you were... 90s okay 90s yeah and and just like you said they were all over the place you know like time they're all okay everyone. everything else so it's because i was like well that doesn't follow it couldn't be in 100 yeah. years but because of uh, from so much that is now becoming canon left and right like that's almost become a joke like is it going to be canon or not who knows um i couldn't find anywhere what that sand creature is what the what the sand by the way badass sand monster when it was walking like a centaur slash creepy half beast centipede holy crap want to pee my pants creature yeah that's actually his official name um well it's funny that creature made me go oh i can't show willow this series like she's not gonna know that's not but, gonna fly that's too scary but what is this a few days after the unfortunate anniversary of carrie fisher's death the sand creature goes out java style you notice that? Oh, you total, that was... total nod. Oh, come on. Do you think of it was? They total would know nod that she's to Princess Leia off in Jabba the Hutt. Okay. I... Again, in the books, that got out to everybody out there in Star Wars land, and Leia was known as the Hut Slayer. She was a badass, dude. All these yeah. stories that they never ever came out with and should now. Just saying. I would uh <laughs> You look very tired right now. No, I'm. I always look <laughs> tired. It's my puppy dog eyes. I I'm trying to think like how I would like that. Would I yeah. like that in a what in a new series? Oh, as as far as pursuing the badassery of Princess Leia. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. If it, the, if if we use the girl from um, uh, that stupid upside down show, um, my uh, um, Miley. Yeah, I almost said Miley Cyrus. Um, uh, I know what you're saying. Seven. She, her name yeah. is Seven or, yeah, or yeah, Eleven, yeah. and she likes waffles. Yeah. What's that girl's name? In, in, in I don't the, know. I don't know. But, but what? What's your well, point? She's, use her. She did a a Carrie Fisher dress up in the buns, and it's unbelievable how much she looks like. She's too young. Well, is she though? Because when so. Princess Leia knocked off Jabba in real life, she's only like 21 years old. Or for real? No. Yeah. She was no. 16 when she was she was 16 when she was in the first movie. She was 16. Yeah, dude. Or or 16 or 17, really young. She wasn't 18. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's another subject completely. Okay. Are oh. there police for that in space? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, she was she was super young. Um and yeah, I don't really think she's she uh, would not uh, uh, the girl from what the hell is that? Stranger <laughs> Things. Good gosh, yes, yeah, Stranger Things. That that girl, she could totally pull it off, and and they could rough her up, make well, her. Well, couldn't bad. they just use her daughter? Doesn't really look a lot like Carrie Fisher though. Okay, she was nineteen years old when she shot. When she Did shot you just look that up? a Did new you just... yeah, I looked okay. it up. Okay, well, so I'm I got to know how dirty of a mind I have right now. So I'm well, like, am I going to go to jail right now? Um, Fish was 19. Okay, so that's, but still, I mean, that was what, 84 when, uh, it was only eight years later. So she was under 30. Yeah. Yeah, I think her daughter could do it. And, and I, I, on the, what? She didn't look at all like Carrie Fisher. Well, with some help. A little CGI help. She yeah. The Stranger Thing girl is spot on. Just love, like I said, just put put a little dirt on her face. Just rough her up a little bit. You okay, know. maybe in ten years. They can okay, do that. that's fine. Um, I think uh, I think I think she's a. You know, it's I, I always think of seven as bald though, like from that first season. Oh yeah. I always yeah. forget like or eleven, not seven. Seven Star Trek. Seven. Um, <laughs> eleven. Wrong show. <laughs> yeah, that she's. I think of her as a as bald. Even yeah. though like, oh yeah, she grew hair later on. I forget. Yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. and she's in other films too. So, I guess she needs hair for that. She does, and she's great in the Enola Holmes series. She was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's actually really good. My my kiddos loved that. So, is uh, okay. So this first episode. Let's. I'm trying to remember how it it ended. Besides in. 
It's primarily a series Perfect. of flashbacks. I mean, it, 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 it ended with his freedom, right? Issued by the Tuscan Raiders saying, yep, thanks. Thanks for letting our little dude claim his first kill outside of the hut. You know, but which then didn't it go forward. forward to something right after his fight? Um, I'm trying to think of why am I not even re- remembering? I don't know, like because I was like, oh, okay, oh, like we, like it, it was a little bit of a cliffhanger. He got he got tossed into the back of the tank again because he asked his guards, his uh, his chubby guards, his chubby chasers, to. Uh, drop him back into the back there because he got zapped so much he got actually hurt yeah. and I, I i think that's why people give are giving the episode so much crap because he's not a young boba fett he is an aging boba fett the back to tank's got him almost back up and he's still obviously got some weakness so we'll see how all that plays out so that's why we he we ended on a flashback still because he's still in in the in the champagne bubbly getting healed up again um is yeah. that a cop out do you think that's a cop out? Cop out to in what sense? Like just having him uh like that, you can see he'll heal people by sticking them in a in the back to tank. I think it's the only way they're gonna make the episodes last any more than two seasons. Just keep dropping his ass into the otherwise into he's the, like have to have a hip replacement and stuff. Yeah. Like well, I mean, same same discussion for Mandalorian. Dude's a crappy fighter. He got the crap beaten out of him by a rhinoceros dude, and then he got the crap beaten out of him by a, you know a bunch of soldiers. Um, what's her face uh, that got kicked off the show? The wrestler chick. She beat the crap out of him. Uh huh. Um, basically, everyone beats the crap out of the Mandalorian, and yet he keeps getting back up. Uh, so that's I love the lesson, that. right? What's that? That's the lesson, right? Well, it is, and it really is. I mean, basically, you do. You keep getting back up. You keep doing whatever it takes. That's why I like it because it's it's rough, and he's someone you're either going to look up to or just be like, oh, dude, you're so dumb. Just kill someone and make a make a point, right? And he did finally by taking out one of the assassins, um, mm-hmm. you know. But he's not killing the insulting Twilek, uh, who is who's uh, what's that guy's name? I'm forgetting his name, um, but he's on Veep. He was the he was the Twilek that showed up and was all apologetic. Yeah. Um, that guy is a great character and you just want to throat punch him. Right. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that 88, the original torture droid from revenge or uh, 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 Re- return of the Jedi, who was like dropping the, dropping the heater or dropping the, uh, Oh my God. I can't, uh, the hot pads on the gonks feet. Yeah. In that scene. Like it's the same droid. I love the fact that they're bringing all these characters back out. Like they're still mm-hmm. doing stuff. Yeah, and Max Rebo. Come on, where's Sice Noodles? Why haven't you mentioned that? Come on, Silas, this is your show. Where's Sice Noodles? Where's the other weird guy that sings all that that, that they added during the uh, um, retouched versions? Where's wasn't that he, weird dude? They, he wasn't he killed in the uh, when the ship collapsed. Well, I don't. I have no idea. I'm probably glad that they. That's how they, I imagined it. He was horrible. Was, yeah, we all wanted just, that weird. Singing for me to die. <laughs> not too bad they all died. But Max pulled yeah. out, man. It's great. Unfortunately, his band is named the Jizz Band, so that's, that's <laughs> kind of awkward. J I Z Z. I don't know. It's pretty awkward. A, that would be an awkward. Yeah, awkward that is the name of his band. Look, look, look it up. It's not. It's not attractive. Are you for real? Yeah, it is. I, I will look that up. Yeah. Do you like? Okay, so you seem to really love the minutia. I, um, I I eat that stuff up, man. I was is, pausing, pausing, pausing so much. Like like the Wookiee pelt that the that the that the transition gives them. I was like, oh God, I hope that's not Chewbacca. You know, I mean right. little priceless things like that. I just ate up. I Do even, you really I even pause it while you're watching it. Yeah. I have and, so many things going on in my head at the same time right do now. Your, even. Do you drive your kids crazy then if you're trying to watch it? They're trying to watch it with them? I actually tell them to shush and not say anything not ask me dumb questions because we're watching it at the same time and then okay. i find myself narrating stuff <laughs> and like and like educating them as the show goes so i'm 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 creating monsters because they probably hate me but although <laughs> my son calvin looked at me when the first box was opened of the tribute yeah. and he's like are those imperial credits like he asked the question i was so proud i i actually shed a tear 
Oh yeah, because there's a uh... yeah. Was it a Mandalorian that they said like they were like no no those are worthless now. There's no value. Yeah. So uh. the ones that the Twi'lek Fwip Jennifer Beals gave him yeah had Imperial credits in it. Not all of them. So that was an insult. So the question mm-hmm. is right. What's going to happen with her? Is she powerful? Did she hire the assassins? Or was it the Twilight governor who was out of town? You see? Huh. So many crazy things could be happening right now. They now, could be also, you right now. Didn't they, didn't he say something about how it wasn't the, he, he, he said he took over the territory, but he didn't say from Jabba. Didn't he say yeah, from someone yeah, else? He no, he, he, he stated that he didn't say that he killed Jabba, but he said that, you know, I'm, I'm. But didn't he mention someone else besides? I thought there was another name besides Jabba. And I was like, what, what's he talking about? Is this. I, yeah, I don't, I didn't okay. catch anything else. She, he was just basically having to defend the fact that he was walking in on his own two feet. And he made that as a very proud statement. Now, I'm curious if we will get other huts involved because in the, remember the expanded universe, like that's a hut, that is a hut territory. Yeah. And if a hut dies, another hut would come in. Another hut comes in. So do you, do you, any predictions? Like, are we going to see another hut? I hope that they'll actually, you know, because, and I'm going to get some of the name wrongs or names wrong from the Rebels series. Um, all of those great characters, right? Um, yeah. Um, the Twi'lek that flew the main ship. Um, yeah. Point point is, I can't remember the name of the of the weird little, almost bisexual voice, purple Jabba or purple hut that was a troublemaker. Had like neon paint on him and stuff. Okay. His character w- was like, oh no, like he had this like really weird, yeah, like like muppet like voice cool character i want them to get the huts in this show i hope they don't cgi it to the point where it's bad right mm. um but then again with the monster that that four-legged monster that they had was i think really well done and they are using um props as often as they can like that that funky bads that funky dog whatever that thing's name, yeah. name is that came out of attack of the clones by the way yeah um that creature most of the scenes when it was sitting down was an actual puppet it was an actual prop oh. with moving bits on it like when it growls at him and, and he's like no feelings might you know like on the shoot of the bobby when he's talking to that dog that was a that was a puppet that wasn't all cgi so i hope they do something really good and introduce the smuggling and really devious aspect of those worms i don't want a fully cgi hut I don't either. Well, but I want, I don't know that I want a puppet hut. Their puppet ability. hut's not that great either. So let's switch it for a second. Have you seen the new series of Witcher, the new season? No, I don't watch Witcher. Okay. It was either episode one or episode two. They had basically almost like a Beauty and the Beast story. Okay. One of the characters was trapped in, uh, in a castle under a curse. The most brilliant cgi on the parts of the face that needed to move and needed to be emotive right Mm -hmm. the rest you could tell it was a dude in a suit they i i think they could do that well now because they can do partial cgi in areas that are green you know and then later filled in with animated eyeballs slimy mouths whatever i think they could do a really good job and i just i think the hut clans are crazy cool and how they've been explain via the books and in cart and comic books mm-hmm. i think it could be fun okay. yeah i will say i do have some enjoy that that not following like the comic books yeah has led for me to have fun now learning about stuff that happened to them yeah. i am interested in the new marvel ones because they are telling me that they are part of this new canon yeah and uh, you know I will say I, I it has been a little hard to read the new books because I did spend a lot of time reading and buying a lot of books that have now that were all part of the world that are now that are gone all fan fiction. Yeah, just I, I mean like the, the uh, Yuzan Vong, the most incredible species and massive 
galaxy level ass whoopers ever. I really like, wanted them to show up in the new one. That's what I think I they talking. will. Honestly, I think they will because Disney, if Disney is doing one thing right, well, that could be questionable too. Um, they're 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 bringing back and calling canon what's going to make them the most money. I mean, honestly, it's all a money grab. Yeah. I think eventually the Yuzan Vong will will yeah. come in. We know <laughs> that uh, what's his name, the blue dude, he's going to be introduced in the Ashoka series. I just forgot his Thrawn. 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 Yes, thank you. Who I. Well, I, I still hope Benedict Cumberbatch is Thrawn. So I still think he's the only character that could do it. He already looks like Thrawn, just paint his ass blue. So I the, my worry about them doing the Vong, where I don't why someone else pointed out why they don't think they'll ever do them. Yeah. Is because the moment the Vong enter, it becomes a horror series. Yes. Right. And yes. will Disney do that to the Star Wars franchise to make I, I mean it should I, be rated R at that point. If the I think involved. they'll wuss it out just enough, right? But then, yeah. I mean, let's let's knock off Chewy, okay? Get him gone. Let's He's throw it. Let's throw a moon at him. Throw a moon at him. Yeah. Whoa. I still cry when I read and, that damn book. And then he can yell to Han, "I knew Yoda." Well, that was great. <laughs> that was a uh... hold. Hold on. Well, we'll hang up there. Um, I I was watching. I was just showing my daughter the prequels, and my my wife's seen them before, but she forgotten maybe on purpose that Yoda knew Chewbacca, right? And she's like, "What?" <laughs> she was just like kind of mad about it. Like, yes. no, no, yeah. So he didn't bother when Han was like, "Yeah, I don't know about this uh, Jedi stuff." And he was, like, "Well, yeah. well, Chewbacca's playing chess." Chewbacca doesn't say, "Oh yeah, no, totally, no, I fought with Jedi. I fought with uh, Yoda, actually." Uh, no, Han, it. it's real. <laughs> and well, and R two D two man, little brother's been around since the damn beginning. Knows everything. Never got wiped. Has every bit of information every plan every star base every death every bad guy every answer little guy just chirps that's why you know, I mean, he can that's probably why talk he can talk he doesn't talk because he just he just says screw y'all figure it out Arthur d is black that's why <laughs> he's not snitching he ain't snitching on nobody he's like no well, he's all as long as y'all ain't messing with me i'm good all right that's, that's like my son the other day. He, he came up to me. He's like, I got the best scientific fact ever, dad. And I'm like, well, what's that, Calvin? He goes, did you know? And then he kind of stops. He goes, wait, wait, wait. Dad, are polar bears, is their skin white or is it black? <laughs> and I just stopped him and said, they're brothers, man. They're black. And he's like, yeah, you knew that. He's like, they're all black. And I'm like, you shouldn't go around saying that. <laughs> <laughs> He was excited. I was like, why are you excited? It's like, Calvin, you're as white as can be. You got orange hair. <laughs> you're big <pink> and white. <laughs> okay, so where yeah. do you hope the series goes? Do you have any hopes for it? Or do, um, hopefully you don't know. I think, I think you, he's going to already open. know things. Do you know I, things already? I don't. I, I actually might know a thing because I do have a friend who has spent time working for LucasArts, and I can't say anything about that. Good. But I do think that he's going to open a Walmart in Moss Pass. But no, um, I think that he's going to, it's going to be like, he's going to have to become violent and he's going to have to battle with that. Because the biggest thing that's blown me away is for all these years, Boba Fett's been a badass. Mm -hmm. Now he's a cranky guy going, get off my sand, you damn kid. So, he, so he's, He's kind of a cranky Boba now, right? Yeah. He's more of a barker or, 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 or something. So I think he's going to have to start fighting. And he's going to have to start laying down the law. And there's going to be so many intertwined things about, oh, how do you take over a, a, a crime boss syndicate? How mm -hmm. many things will he find out? How many things will bite him in the butt? I think whoever this Twilight governor is, he's probably going to be a major Domo badass for a while mm -hmm. until something happens. And I think it's going to, I think season one is going to be rough, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be interesting. I think there'll be a lot of like, what the hell did I just watch type of scenes? Hopefully no more parkour, but 
I, I just, I really like the fact that they have a world we can watch now. Yeah. Another whole thing to experience, good or bad. It's still Star Wars. We're getting Star Wars. I'm getting freaking Boba Fett after 40 years of waiting. So to you, me, you had, you had some big complaints too about Mandalorian too, which episodes I, I, I loved. But that I loved, I loved those episodes. So I had a few. I'm, I'm interested really, to see how wrong you will be about a, this. A few of them really chuffed me, like 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 the whole satanic Grogu eating all the babies. I, I mean, had no problem with that. That's that little mofo. That's like a he, circle of on. life, Sur- survival of fittest man. Like his species, they gotta be like apex predator badasses. Because well, you all know that Yoda gets caffeinated and he goes blitzkrieg all yeah. the freaking place. So, you know, we're getting some hints into that. And, and, and who knows? I mean, what other... I, I think another opportunity that, we're, that we'll see are, are more bounty hunters. I love what they've mm-hmm. done with the CGI and everything with the, with the transitions. I love the Bosque race. They're so cool, so yeah. slimy, so great. And in, in The Mandalorian, a couple of them got vaporized during that one a attack scene in, in the canyon. Yeah. They, they did him so well. Um, the, the one blue guy, um, the bounty hunter that wears the, the, the cool like cowboy hat. I'm, I'm, I'm horrible at, at the names all of a sudden. I think they're going to bring in a lot of fan favorites from the bounty hunter perspective. People hired to kill Boba Fett. So we're going to start to okay. see more Easter eggs like that and how he just basically, it's like a tower defense game. He's going to be on top going, pew, 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 you know, yeah. taking out stuff as the denizens of this whole society just start coming after him. Okay. I, li- I like this idea of uh, other bounty hunters that we've seen. Yeah. Um, and, and, and from Rebels, that one guy with the huge hat that he can like, he used it as a freaking dish to sled in during one yeah. Anakin fight scene, and he could throw it. I mean, I think the technology Clone Wars. Um, if it was Anakin, it would have been Clone Wars. Right? It was. It must have been Clone Wars. Yeah, but I mean, with technology now, we're gonna be able to see so many things we never even thought possible. Yeah, I mean, just like the i the the eighty eight the IG eighty eight droid in the episode yeah. two or three of the Mandalorian. That was the best episode because this thing was turning around and shooting and yeah. the way it like had to turn its whole body to like funky sidestep a body on the ground as it was going over the door that collapsed i mean just yeah those things that they thought about there's they were so beautifully done and articulated and represented just imagine what happens if they, th- they start bringing in cad bane that's the blue guy with the cowboy hat and he okay. talks like this and he's all like crazy you know i could do imitations anyway yeah i can't yeah. wait dude I, I, I think it's it's great having someone who was a fan in charge of it. Yeah. Like definitely. that it, it helps so much. And yeah. in, in just there's 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 a love to this series like the last one of of the world to play in. And I think that Do you think they'll bring in other directors like they did with the Mandalorian? Are we gonna see Bryce Howard again? Are we gonna say Tiki Masala, whatever the hell his name is? <laughs> well I think you do you do have to as a, a just from a practical standpoint. Yeah but you don't really well I mean, you in, in a TV production really did that aren't they? Huh? Isn't Mandalorian the first one that really did that that brought in like five six different directors and said here's the vision y'all take your point on it and run with it no i mean well, okay. uh, what do you mean compared to what else like, like Star? well yeah i mean like has has any show brought in multiple directors for episodes? yeah no okay. it's common yeah especially in sci-fi yeah okay. you're, you're... That, I, I wasn't actually aware oh of no it. there's like star trek the series has oh, like yeah, true true 10 and 10 different ones in a season like okay. and everyone took their sh- remember directing and i don't know how much they're doing it like a film right yeah, because yeah. it still has this definitely still has a producer's vision like so there's a vision running throughout yeah. so it's all tied a together. direct in television a director is almost more of a stage manager they are really just they're making yeah. sure everything gets done being yeah. a great director isn't the end all be all yeah um which makes it interesting when you hear the, like the story of Denzel Washington and somebody getting in at it on, on set is like, well, usually directors don't have that big of a say and you don't have someone big like Denzel 
directing yeah. an episode. Yeah. He's not directing a film. So actually the actor sometimes has more say on what's going on sure. um, because it's TV. I don't know this because it's not traditional TV. So I don't know if their schedule is as tight as a television show. That's why usually, you know, you're in post-production for a couple of weeks while the next one's being shot. So that's why you can't like direct back-to-back episodes. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to find out more about how it is shot, what the schedule is like, but I would expect more, more directors, but I think it is still Favreau's vision that is going to, to be there. And you're supposed to, it's where the real collaboration of the field, I think exists yeah. where you are, you are taking this person's vision and carrying it through. And your responsibility is to make sure that vision stays intact, not to just make your own spin on things. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I, I hope they do bring in just as much incredible talent as they did for the Mandalorian series to do those mini movies, which I do feel like it, And I also watched the whole behind the scenes stuff on the Disney channel where all those directors were sitting around the table. And you're right. Oh. It was it was a huge collaborative effort. Yeah, Favreau is totally there. Dave Filoni is totally there. And then I haven't watched that. I haven't watched that yet. Oh, please watch it. It's very entertaining. It's brilliant. And I um, at least one of the directors, uh, Asian gal. I I don't know her. I don't know her background. So I, I then went to go pursue and find out what she's done. Um, she's brilliant. I can't think of her name. Um, you'll enjoy that. Um, it's the behind the mask. I think it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will as soon as award season's done and I'm done voting for yeah. movies, uh, we'll, I will get on this. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we've been going now a while, so I need to make cut this off. People stop <laughs> watching. Um, so, okay. Check it out. Uh, Boba Fett, the how the book of Boba, the book of now Boba. airing on Disney plus, um, um, Sal Sunstein, check out podcast black and a half. You have a uh, Brian Trendler, check out shut up and laugh his podcast shut up and laugh and uh yeah well uh, and then then we're here so let's go let's be back for episode episode two episode two. two it's only two I like know. one two or just on just two it I feels a like a continuation so long. i was like oh, how is this not episode 505 i don't know i know all the good time thank all you right. brother. great to talk with you a fellow fan yeah yeah may the force be with you Take care, man.